Hey guys, how are you? All right, so if you've been following me on social media lately, you know I've been doing a lot of stitching and I've been using some of my own rubber stamp and stencil designs on fabric to create an a design that I can then embroider. Now, initially, I just took some of my stencils and th these are um, from a stencil design called the Four Faces Stencil. And you get all four of these faces. I cut mine apart, but you get all four of them on the same stencil and it is um, arranged on the stencil so that you can do this and cut them apart if you would so choose. There are two of them. These are full on faces. And then there is one that has two three quarter faces and two profile faces on it. So I chose to use this one and I initially took that one and I traced it onto some fabric with a fabric marking pen and this one is, it just says International Japan. It says Easy International Japan. I don't remember what brand this is. Now there's some of these fabric markers, they're in the Sewy Notions of Your Fabric Store. Um, I do believe they even have them in the sewing section of Michael's. Um, some of them are water soluble fabric marking pens and some of them fade um, over time. They're just air, air soluble. Is that a thing? I don't know. But some of them will stay unless you get them wet. This is one of those. Now I do find that even with the ones that are supposed to stay unless you get them wet, that if you leave the um, piece for too long, uh, then it will fade a bit and you have to go over the marks again. Um, but I would just do it no more than like a day or two ahead. And I, for this, you can see, I just used scraps of muslin and I took my face um, that I wanted to use, the stencil, and I just took the marker and I marked the, the face on the, on the fabric and then I embroidered it. And these these are basic faces intended to um, just give you a starting point if you don't know how to draw a face and then you embellish it with um, hair and everything else that you would like to do which is what I did here on these and then I got them wet um, with a spray bottle that's just off camera and ironed them flat all the marker came off so I like to do that very much and then I thought I've marked on fabric before with this stamp pad, which is supposed to be the same kind of stuff as in the pen, but it's Colorbox Erasable Fabric Ink Pad. This is water soluble ink. So it's supposed to stay, again, like the marker, unless you get it wet. The problem with this stamp pad, although it works great, mine is very juicy, they don't make it anymore. And there is another one um, that's made a, by a Japanese company, but it's super hard to get here in the US. So I thought, well, if people want to do this, then what are they going to do, right? And I did do two new designs with this ink pad. Um, and before anybody asks, the feather is from stamp set number nine. Let's see if I can do this without things falling, which comes with all of those designs. Yeah, making sure you can see it in the camera. And then this other one is from Modern Atomic set number four which comes with these designs and is tend to, intended to be a layering stamp. So you choose a background color and you lay, you stamp this, and then you choose a different color that's maybe slightly darker um, than the background color and you stamp this one over it, something like that. But also you could use these separately, which a lot of people do. And this one's intended to be layered over that one. Anyway, I chose this design from that stamp set and I stamped it onto fabric with this color box uh, ink pad, which I know works because I've used it before. But then when I was um, trying to find a solution on the internet, I found this one. So this is Hampton Art Ultra Washable, uh, washable Ink Pad. And this is in color, I got a lighter color. I wanted to get a color that was similar to the color box one because I didn't want the color to be the reason we couldn't get all the ink out if it doesn't all come out. Um, this is turquoise. So I got this on Amazon, it's readily available. I'll try to put a link down below. 
and I stamped two more of the same images with that ink. Um, I'm gonna insert a picture here before they're embroidered and you can clearly see that this one is slightly darker than this one. You can also see that the washable ink pad didn't bleed at all on the fabric, whereas this uh, fabric marking one did a bit. I'll try to zoom in on the picture a little bit for you here. And so that, I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna make a difference or not. If that one means the fabric marking one is more uh, water soluble than the other, I don't know, I have no idea. So, but we're gonna find out. And I will say before anybody asks, the floss used is a rainbow floss called Bradley's Balloons by Threadworks and it's color number 1154. I got it on um, Etsy because it seemed to be the easiest place for me to get it from. I am loving it. I've already used a lot of the hank that came. It didn't come on this cardboard um, card I put it on here. It came in a hank, rolled up in hank. Um, I love it. I love the colors of it. It's really fabulous. I'll, I can see me ordering more of that. All right, so now we're gonna get started and we're gonna, we're gonna start with the feathers, the smaller design. Let's hope this works. Um, now on the fabric marking one, it says to erase ink, wet cotton swab or cloth with water and wipe away image, repeat as necessary. With the washable ink, it says child safe ink washes off skin Adult supervision recommended. It doesn't say anything about fabric. It just says it's washable. So it may not come out, I don't know. Please note some colors may require more than one washing. So it might not come out, but we're gonna find out. What I am gonna get is a rag to go underneath these, just in case I don't want glue all over my ironing board. I know my ironing board is dirty, but let's not make it more dirty. What I have found with some embroidery things that are supposed to be washable that won't come out is I spray them, once the design is completed like this, I spray them with, um, not spray them, I use a tied to go stick and then it comes out completely. So we're gonna just do that. It does look like it's fading. So then I'm gonna leave it sit for a minute and we're gonna see what happens and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna move over the floral design, which I sprayed with water. Yeah, you can see it. So I, um, what I will say is, can you see how the ink here is bleeding? That's not a shadow. Um, and it's, it's fading here, but this is actually bleeding into the fabric. It is washing away, but we're gonna take our Tide to Go stick I'm not too concerned if all the ink doesn't come out. First of all, this is an experiment. Second of all, it just gives it kind of a distressed look, which I'm not mad at, so. Now we shouldn't need that on this one because I know from experience this one will wash. This is the color box one, it will wash out completely. Let's switch these around. So this is the Hampton Art one. This is the color box one. So it is fading on the feather too, but it is not fading completely. So we'll go in with our tie to go stick. I had somebody recently tell me, oh, those are terrible. They don't work. Yes, they do too. <laughs> they do too. 
I don't know what you're thinking. Now most of your flosses are color safe, and if you've tied good knots, you could put these in a lingerie bag and put them in the laundry, that would work. Okay, spray it with a bit more water. We'll let those sit and I'll be back. Okay, now we're gonna iron them, which I usually always do. And I just get a hot iron. Yeah, there we go. I was afraid there for a second I had it and turned it on all the way. I use a little steam to give it a little more moisture to ensure that the ink like disappears. And I know you can't see yet. I'm gonna give you a close up in a minute. These aren't dry yet, and as they do dry, the ink should fade some more. That's actually the Hampton Art one, and it actually, between the water and the um, Tide to Go stick, it almost all came out. It looks like it all came out. And again, it is a darker color ink, so I gotta think that if you get the lightest color possible, That will work even better. These uh, little flowery shapes are all French knots and then pistol stitch. FYI. Okay, and then let's do the feathers. This is the color box one, which I'm bummed they don't make it that ink pad anymore, but it looks like the Hampton Art is a decent substitute. So, and then this is the Hampton Art Feather. And it looks like, it looks pretty good. There's a little, I can still see a little bit of the ink on it, but it's not bad. I'm going to give you a close up here. Here's the feather. Can you see that? So this is the Hampton Art one and you can see a little bit of the ink. And then this is the other design, which looks like the ink is all gone on this one. So it might be just a matter of me on the feather leaving it sit a little more. So I think the um, Short answer is yes, this actually is doable. I would I would say to you anyway, if you're gonna use um, some of your mixed media tools, so stamps and stencils to um, create embroidery designs, which is a great idea and a great way for those of us who have uh, a large stash of stamps and stencils, or in my case are actually stamp and stencil designers. It helps us find a new creative way to use those supplies in a way other than with paint and marker. Um, these kind of washable stamp pads come in handy. Again, use a very light color, but I would say uh, add a tie to go stick to your stash of stuff in the art room. Now, again, I, I do these anyway. I have lots of other ways of marking um, designs on fabric, including there is a pencil um, that you can um, actually take um, maybe um, um, something that you wrote or something that you printed and you can actually go over it with this pencil and then iron the pencil onto the fabric and to create the design. The pencil is super hard to get off though and so you definitely need a tie to go stick for that. So that's how I know to have one of these upstairs and I only had it downstairs because I was getting um, soy sauce out of a shirt but and it sounds empty so I think I need to get more um, uh, but I usually have one. It's a good tool if you're going to do this to have in your art room and this is a great way to adapt to using some of these stamps and stencil supplies in your in your art in your stitching um, in a new fun creative way 
And even if you use these designs in mixed media, which would be great um, to add these little stitches to a mixed media page, that would be fabulous. Um, so yeah, I hope you find it interesting. I will link uh, my Etsy shop in the description below. I have over a hundred different stencil designs and I've, I've lost count of um, the stamp sets. I, I Not that many, but there are quite a few, maybe 30, maybe 40, I don't know. Um, and there's more stuff coming I can't talk about. Um, so anyway, so um, yeah, I'll link my um, Etsy store in the description below along with um, the Hampton Art stamp pad and the marking pen. Um, I'll even I'll even link for you guys that aren't in the U.S. and don't know what this is. The Tide to Go stick. If you don't know what this is, I don't. I thought everybody knows about them. Um, this one, it's a color box again, erasable fabric ink pad. This is a light blue color. They don't make it anymore. So if you find this somewhere um, and it's not completely dried out, I would maybe at a estate sale or a yard sale or even on in a, on a clearance website, I would say you might want to pick one up. Don't pay a ton of money for it. It's not worth it. It is a great stamp pad, but especially not when this one's available. All right, just get a really light blue color. If I could have found a really light sky blue, I would have gotten that, but all I could find was turquoise. So anyway... All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Support the free content here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups by either, again, shopping in my Etsy shop or uh, PayPal tip jar or joining Patreon. A lot of times at Patreon, you guys get a speed, sped through video of me creating something here. They get the full instructional video over there. Um, in fact, there's a whole painting series coming up that they're yeah, they're getting all the instruction over there. Um, and it's a very small, like $2 a month fee. It's not a lot of money. Um, so think about doing that. And not just for me. There is a lot of really great YouTube creators out there in the in our art community, sincere, honest, um, hardworking creatives. And they all mostly have a way for you to support them. I know they would appreciate it. Check out their video descriptions for said ways. And if you can't find any information on that, ask them. Um, and most of them also have some kind of presence over on Facebook. So I know they would appreciate you helping support them. Um, so please do that. Don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.